Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with chapter 9. Chapter 9 is natural convection. We did the first part. Today we are going to do paragraph 9.3, natural convection over surfaces. For the first time we are going to do some problems. And that would be continued with paragraph 9.4, natural convection from thin surfaces and printed circuit boards. And then 9.5 in enclosures. And then 9.6 combined natural and forced convection. Okay, so let's start with paragraph 9.3, natural convection over surfaces. Okay. The missile number, which is equal to the heat transfer coefficient, The missile number, which is equal to the heat transfer coefficient, multiplied by a char characteristic length, divided by the thermal conductivity. If, if you do lots of experiments and you plot it, then after a while you discover that normally it can be written in the following format. A constant multiplied by, not the Reynolds number, but the Grassoff number based on the characteristic length, multiplied by the Prandtl to the n. And the Grassoff number multiplied by the Prandtl number is the Rayleigh number. So normally we can write it in that format. Where the Rayleigh number is equal to the Grassoff number multiplied by the Prandtl number is equal, and the Grassoff number is equal to G multiplied by beta multiplied by the surface temperature minus T infinite multiplied by the char characteristic length to the third divided by the kinematic viscosity square okay. so that is the Grassoff number multiplied by the Prandtl number now the Prandtl number can be written in different formats can be written as Cp multiplied by the viscosity divided by the thermal conductivity or it can be written as the kinematic viscosity divided by alpha where alpha is equal to K divided by rho Cp thermal diffusivity <coughs> Okay, so if we substitute the Prandtl number in there and we make it a little bit neat, then we can write the Rayleigh number as G multiplied by beta multiplied by the surface temperature minus T infinite multiplied by the length to the third divided by <coughs> the kinematic viscosity <laughs> multiplied by alpha <coughs> sorry So we can write the Grassoff number in that format. Okay, now the Nusselt number, as we've said, is equal to, can be written as the constant multiplied by the Rayleigh number. This constant C, this constant C depends on the geometry. Is the flow over a flat plate? Is it over a rounded surface, or a cylinder, or a tube, or whatever? And it would also depend on the flow regime. Again, is the flow laminar, in the transitional flow regime, or turbulent flow? But normally, C would work out as a value smaller than 1. Uh, sorry, N must be 
Missile number is equal to a constant multiplied by rally to the N. This N usually is approximately a quarter if the flow is laminar and it is approximately equal to a third if the flow is turbulent. And all the characteristics in terms of the rally number, which is a function of the Prandtl number and other constants, are usually obtained at the film temperature, which is half, half multiplied by the surface temperature plus T infinite. And obviously the convection heat transfer for natural convection is then equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the surface area multiplied by Ts minus T infinite. Where we get this heat transfer coefficient from the Nussel number relationship which is a which is equal to a constant multiplied by the Rayleigh number. Okay. Typical values or correlations for the Nusselt number for different geometries is given in your textbook in single and Gijar in table 9.1 table 9.1 if I can refer you to the screen there there we see different types of geometries many more are available in literature but the idea with the textbook is just to give you an idea of what is available okay, there we can see a vertical plate okay. again a vertical plate at an angle then an horizontal plate and it shows on which surface it is hot and that on that side it's the upper side and this side it is the lower side of the plate then there's a vertical cylinder horizontal cylinder and a sphere okay. next to it take note it tells us how we, how we must calculate the characteristic length because here in the rally number this is the characteristic length okay. and depending on how the experiments was done this characteristic length might differ from researcher to researcher and from textbook to textbook so you have to be very very careful when you get the characteristic length then it gives you the range of the rally number in which the correlations is valid and they are typical relationships which are available okay. and you can see especially these easy ones it Nusselt number is equal to a constant multiplied by rally to the n okay. all of them okay now this textbook Ach, this table is obviously available in your textbook and as I've warned you many many times there is fine, a fine print in the textbook next to the table there are other scenarios which are described for example a constant surface temperature case or a constant heat flux case okay. so you have to go and read those very very carefully so for example it says in the fine print that if you are interested in a vertical plate then you can go and get the correlation oh, not TS, the Nusselt number, sorry so for the case when TS is equal to a constant then the Nusselt number equation is something like this it's available there and from this you can get the heat transfer coefficient okay but now you get to the next case which is the constant heat flux
And you'll see in the table there are no such examples. There are no such correlations. So what it says is you can actually use that heat transfer coefficient, but you have to make a small adjustment, and that adjustment is to say that the heat flux, which is equal to the heat transfer coefficient, multiplied by the surface temperature, the surface temperature now becomes the temperature at L divided by 2. Okay. The first case, the temperature on the plate is constant everywhere. If you've got a constant heat flux case, that is not the case. The temperature varies all over the plate. So you have to go and use the temperature at the midpoint, <coughs> like that, and then you can calculate the heat flux. If we call that equation 2, then in the fine print it will tell you, for example, So the flow for the bottom side would move up here, then it is trapped and it has to move around to the sides, like that. So therefore the heat transfer coefficient at the bottom is not equal to the heat transfer coefficient at the top. Then the table and in the text it would also indicate to you that normally when we've got a flat plate then we calculate the characteristic length as the area divided by the perimeter. Do you have to remember it? No. Please do not. Look in the table. It gives you all that information. Okay. That is sort of the theory of natural convection. Are you happy with it? Any questions? Okay, not. So let's do two examples to make things clearer. The first example is example 9.1. It is based on the example in your textbook, but it's not the same. So the example is 
a pipe or a tube with a diameter of 100 millimeters. Let's continue. Okay. So let's come back to example 9.1. A 10 meter long pipe. 10 meter long pipe. Diameter 100 millimeters. Surface temperature is 80 degrees Celsius. 10 degrees Celsius. Determine the heat transfer rate. Okay, the film temperature is equal to the average of the surface temperature and the environment temperature, which is 90 divided by 2, and that is 45 degrees Celsius. Okay. The properties for air in your textbook is available in table A15. Okay. And from there we can get the thermal conductivity which is equal to 0.02699 watts per meter Kelvin. The kinematic viscosity is equal to 1.750 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5 square meters per second. The Prandtl number is equal to 0.7241. And beta is equal to 1 divided by the film temperature. And for an ideal gas, for an ideal gas it's the film temperature. So that is equal to 1 divided by 45 plus, very importantly, 273.15. Because the temperature should be in Kelvin if we calculate beta, not in degrees Celsius. So that is equal to 1 divided by 318.15. Okay. It shouldn't come as a surprise. We have to calculate not the Reynolds number, but now the rally number. So the rally number is equal to G multiplied by beta multiplied by T S minus T infinite multiplied by D to the third divided by the kinematic viscosity multiplied by the Prandtl number. You can multiply in the Prandtl number and make the equation a little bit simpler if you want to. But the Prandtl number is usually it's very easy to get. So it saves us a little bit in terms of time in the calculation. Okay. G is equal to 9.81. Beta is 1 divided by 318.15. The surface temperature is equal to 80 degrees Celsius. The environment temperature is equal to 10. Multiplied by the diameter to the third. Multiplied by the Prandtl number. The Prandtl number is equal to 0.7241. Divide everything by the kinematic viscosity. 1.750 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5, the square of it. Okay, so if we calculate the uh, rally number, it works out as 5.1 multiplied by 10 to the 6. Okay. So if we go look at table 9.1, it gives us the rally number 
the range of the rally number I don't know if you can see it well but it looks like smaller than 10 to the 12 and we are smaller than 10 to the 12 and there is the relationship that gives us the Nusselt number so from table 9.1 we can go and get equation 925 which gives us the Nusselt number as 0.6 plus 0.387 multiplied by the rally number to the 6 divided by 1 plus 0.3 double five nine divided by the pronal number all to the nine divided by sixteen close the square brackets everything to the eight divided by twenty seven and then everything everything should be squared quite a long equation that gives us the Nusselt number Any questions? <coughs> okay. okay, I'm not going to put in all the values. You can go and do that at home. If you go and do the calculation, it works out the missile number as 23.25. The rally number we have calculated, there it is. The pronal number we've got is equal to 0.7241. And that's actually the only two things that we need to put into this formula. The Nusselt number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by, normally, the characteristic length what does it say for a cylinder, a horizontal cylinder? It tells us the characteristic length is the diameter. So that we get from table 9.1. It's in table 9.1. The Nusselt number is equal to 23.25. It's equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the diameter, which is equal to 0.1 divided by the thermal conductivity which is equal to <coughs> 0.02699 from which we can solve the heat transfer coefficient as 6.274 watts per meter degree watts per square meter degree Celsius okay. 6.274 take note how small the value is Natural convection, heat transfer coefficients are very, very small. Rarely we would go to 100 or hundreds. Usually 10 smaller approximately. So if you've done the calculation and you got a value of 6,274, you should know you've made a mistake. Okay. Okay, let's calculate the heat transfer rate. The heat transfer rate of the natural convection is there, therefore equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the surface area multiplied by Ts minus temperature of the environment. Okay, the heat transfer coefficient we've calculated as 6.274 multiplied by the surface area over which the heat transfer occurs that is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter multiplied by the length multiplied by the surface temperature which is equal to 80 degrees Celsius and the environment temperature which is equal to 10 and that gives us a heat transfer rate of 1380 watts
Any questions? Are you all happy with that result? Anybody who's not? Now I'm getting worried. Okay. What is wrong? Something is wrong. What is wrong? Okay. The question was to determine the heat transfer rate. The question wasn't determine the heat transfer rate only from natural convection. Heat transfer, there are three different modes of heat transfer. Conduction, convection and radiation. So let's just go and check the radiation heat transfer. I know it is sort of not fair because I didn't give us all the information. But this is a classical problem where you should sort of be uncomfortable when you already see the problem and you should think of, you know, radiation may play an important role here. So the radiation heat transfer rate is equal to the emissivity multiplied by the surface area multiplied by the Stefan Boltzmann constant multiplied by the surface area to the fourth minus the surrounding area to the fourth. Okay. And what we're going to do is we are going to assume the emissivity is equal to one. It would be less than one. You need to go and get it into tables and you need, need more information. But let's just assume it is equal to one. The surf <coughs> surface area is still the same. Pi multiplied by the di diameter multiplied by the length. The Stefan Boltzmann constant is equal to 5.678 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5 multiplied by the surface temperature. The surface temperature is now equal to 80 plus 273 must be in Kelvin minus 10 plus 273 to the fourth. And if we do the calculation, then the radiation heat transfer is equal to 1626 watts. So it is actually more than the natural convection in this case. So the total heat transfer rate is equal to the heat transfer rate of the natural convection plus the heat transfer rate of the radiation. And if you add that together, it is 3,005 watts or 3 kilowatts of heat. And that is obviously the reason why pipes like that at that temperatures, 80 degrees Celsius, will have some insulation on in industry. Because the heat transfer rate is quite significant. Any questions? Okay, the next question that we're going to do is we're going to look at the heat transfer rate from a flat plate but in different configurations. Let's suppose this is a flat plate and its temperature is 90 degrees Celsius and on this side it is insulated. Okay, 90 degrees Celsius plate, insulated. So if I keep the plate like this, it will have a certain heat transfer rate. If I do it like that, then it would have another heat transfer rate and if I turn it around, it will have another one. Which one is going to be the highest? Okay, remember it's insulated on the one side, it's heated on this side, you can keep it in a vertical position, horizontal position, with the heated side on top or I can turn it around. Heat transfer rate of which one is going to be the most? Okay, who of you vote for the vertical plate? No, oh, come on, what's wrong? Vote, let me see. Horizontal one, like that. This one, like that. Okay, let's see. Okay. 
plate that we are going to use is going to have dimensions of one meter by one meter. And the surface temperature of the plate is equal to 90 degrees Celsius. And the environment temperature is equal to 10 degrees Celsius. Okay, that is configuration A. And take note, on this side, it is insulated. Okay, so we are in only interested in the heat transfer rate, in this, in this case, only of the natural convection. We are not going to add the radiation heat transfer. Only the natural convection radiation. That's the first case. The second case is B. The insulation is now on this side, and the heat transfer rate is from there okay. and the third case would be a plate like that insulation is now on this side and the heat transfer rate is from the bottom that is case C Okay, film temperature is equal to the surface temperature plus the environment temperature divided by 2 and that would be 50 degrees Celsius. Again, in the same table, we can get the properties for air, which are firstly the density which is equal to 1.092 kilograms per cubic meter. Thermal conductivity K, which is equal to 0.02735. The kinematic viscosity, which is equal to 1.96 multiplied by 10 to the minus 5 square meter per second. The pronal number which is equal to 0.7233 and beta which is equal to 1 divided by the film temperature is equal to 1 divided by 50 plus 273 First case we are going to consider is for the vertical plate. Okay. For the vertical plate, if we look at table 9.1, there are three options. As you can see, the first one is for the range 10 to the 4th to 10 to the 9th. The second one 10 to the 10th to 10 to the 13th. Two very simple and easy equations. And the third one is then valid for the entire range. But take note, it says underneath it, it is complex but more accurate. So in the fine print of your textbook, you will also see that is unfortunately the recommended equation to be used. Okay. More work to get the result. So let's start by calculating the rally number. Because once we know the rally number, then we can make our choice. Okay. The rally number is equal to G multiplied by beta multiplied by the surface temperature minus T infinite multiplied by L to the third divided by the kinematic viscosity multiplied by the Prandtl number.
Okay. What I'm going to do now is I'm not going to do the substitution of every value. Okay, I'm just going to give you the results. You can go and do the hand calculations at home if you want to. G is 9.1, 9.81, isn't it? Okay. Beta is 1 divided by that. The surface temperature we have, it is 90 degrees Celsius. The environment temperature is 10. L, what is L equal to? Don't need to remember it. Look in the table. What does it say? It says, use the length in that direction. In that direction, it is 1 meters. So L is equal to 1. So that is from table 9.1. Okay. The pronal number is 0.7233. And the kinematic viscosity, there it is. Okay. So you can go and do the calculation for the rally number and the calculation is going to show you it is equal to 5.429 multiplied by 10 to the 9th. Okay. So if you look at that rally number, you can see that you can get away with the second equation. The Nusselt number is equal to 0.1 multiplied by rally to the third but they tell us the third equation is valid for the entire range and it is more accurate. Okay. So let's use the more accurate equation. The more accurate equation gives the Nusselt number as equal to 0.825 plus 0.387 multiplied by rally to the sixth divided by 1 plus 0.492 divided by the pronal number to the 9 divided by 16 everything 8 divided by 27 and we have to square everything like that okay not nice to go and work out on your small computer <coughs> but if you do it correctly then the Nusselt number should be equal to 208.6. Okay. Now that we know the Nusselt number, we can calculate the heat transfer coefficient. The Nusselt number is equal to 208.6. The heat transfer coefficient is what we want to determine. L is the length of the plate which is equal to 1 divided by the thermal conductivity which is equal to 0.02735 and from this we can solve the heat transfer coefficient as equal to 5.706 watts per square meter degree Celsius. Okay, again, if we look at the result it is sort of what we would expect. Okay. It is not hundreds or thousands for the heat transfer coefficient for natural convection. So we can go and calculate the heat transfer rate as equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the surface area multiplied by the surface temperature minus T infinite, the ambient temperature. And if you do the calculation then it is equal to 456 0.5 watts. Okay, take note, it is only the natural convection. Let's put in there the NC to indicate natural convection. Most probably the radiation in this case would also be significant. Right, that is the first part of the problem. The second part of the problem was to determine it with the hot side up. So the hot surface facing up, okay now, again look at table 9.1, what do you see, the first thing is, the first case of the two horizontal place is for the hot surface facing up, isn't it? So that is the one that we want to use. Right, so the rally number 
must surely be the same as that, isn't it? The rally number, we've already calculated it. So it is equal to 5.429 multiplied by the 10 to the 6. Correct? Why not? Yes. Classical mistake, that is not correct. Because if we look at the, the formula for the rally number, it is equal to G multiplied by beta, multiplied by the surface temperature minus the environment temperature, multiplied by the characteristic length to the third, divided by the kinematic viscosity squared, multiplied by the primal number. And in this case, for the horizontal flat plate, we have to calculate L as the area divided by the perimeter. Do you see? Surface area divided by the perimeter. And the surface area in this case is 1 multiplied by 1 meters. The perimeter is 4 times 1 meters. So the characteristic length is equal to 0.25, which is totally different than that of the first case. You see that? Okay, so if you do this substitution with all the values, then it gives us a rally number of 8.482 multiplied by 10 to the 7th. And then the Nusselt number equation is fortunately very simple. 0.15 multiplied by the rally to the third, and that gives us a Nusselt number of So therefore, the Nusselt number is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the length divided by the thermal conductivity. Okay. If we look at this Nusselt number and this Nusselt number, <coughs> which one would you expect is going to have the highest heat transfer rate? First one, isn't it? Because the Nusselt number is higher. However, you have to be careful now, the L in the Nusselt number is not the same, and therefore you can't really compare them. They have two different characteristic lengths. So the Nusselt number is 65.91. It's equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the characteristic length, which is now equal to 0.25, divided by the thermal conductivity, the thermal conductivity is equal to 0 0.0273.5 and if you solve the heat transfer coefficient it is now equal to 7.211 watts per square meter degree Celsius. Okay. So the heat transfer coefficient is higher although the Nusselt number is lower. Because the Nusselt number is based on two different characteristic lengths. This one, it was this length, one meter, and in the second case the characteristic length was based on the surface area divided by the perimeter, which gives us a characteristic length of 250 millimeters. So, if we can go and calculate the heat transfer right now, is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the surface area Ts minus T environment and that gives us a heat transfer rate of 576.9 watts. Okay, so that is the second case and we can see that the heat transfer rate for the horizontal plate is higher than that of the vertical plate. 
The last one, you can go and do at home. Okay. That's the hot surface facing up. The hot surface facing up. The Nusselt number is equal to 25.91. The heat transfer coefficient is equal to 2.835. Watts per square meter degree Celsius. Very, very low. Remember, a Nusselt number of 1 means that the heat transfer is by conduction. So this is sort of the enhancement, which is about three times higher. So the heat transfer rate by natural convection, if you go and calculate it, is going to be 226.8 watts. Significant changes in the heat transfer rate depending on the orientation, which is being caused by natural convection. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much, and then I'll see you again soon. Thank you.